Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're taking a deep dive into something I find really fascinating. Oh yeah. Uh, the world of the Amish and right. how they managed to save so much money. We've been digging into some recent articles and research. Uh -huh. Well, let's just say their methods go way beyond just clipping coupons. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we often hear about how the Amish save like 50% on living costs compared yeah. to the rest of us. But the real story is less about just being frugal and more about uh, a cultural philosophy that's really baked into their way of life. Right. Yeah. It's like a whole different mindset. So let's break this down a bit. One of the things that really stands out oh. in the research is their emphasis on self-sufficiency. Yeah. They're practically mm -hmm. masters of DIY living, growing their own food, making their own clothes, even handling repairs within their community. It's amazing. Imagine a life with almost no grocery bills or never having to call a plumber for a leaky faucet. Yeah. That right there eliminates a huge chunk of expenses that most of us deal with all the time. Totally. Yeah. And that brings up another interesting point. A lot of Amish homes aren't even connected to the power grid. Right. According to the research. Exactly. Instead, they rely on alternative energy sources, things like solar, propane, and wood. And because they don't use a lot of electronic devices, yeah. their overall energy needs are much lower. It's all connected. It's true. So they're not just saving money on those monthly bills, yeah. but they're also reducing their impact on the environment. Yeah. Makes you think about how much we rely on being constantly plugged in and all the costs that come with that. Mm -hmm. But what about getting around? I mean, we can't all realistically picture ourselves commuting in horse-drawn buggies. Well, for many Amish communities, horse-drawn buggies are their main mode of transportation. Yeah. At least for shorter distances. No gas to buy, no car insurance, no expensive repairs. It makes sense in their context. Right. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But what about when they do need to travel longer distances? Oh, they have systems in place for that, too. They often carpool within the community or even hire a driver and split the costs. Wow. So it's all about sharing resources and working together. Exactly. Community is really at the heart of their lifestyle. It seems very efficient. Mm. But let's shift gears a bit and talk about health care. Okay. I mean, that's a major expense for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. How did the Amish deal with those costs? They have a really interesting system. According to the research, many communities have community-funded health care. Okay. So all the members contribute to a shared fund to cover medical expenses. It's like a built-in safety net. But is that really enough to manage all the complexities and rising costs of health care? It's a big part of it, but they have other strategies, too. They actually negotiate directly with healthcare providers as a community oh, wow. to get lower rates. And they often use alternative medicine and natural remedies as well. So it's kind of a multifaceted approach. That's fascinating. It's a stark contrast to the kind of individualistic and often overwhelming healthcare system that many of us face. Definitely. Now, look, I'm not saying their system is perfect or that we should all try to copy it exactly, but it does make you think. There are alternative models out there, and by looking at them closely, yeah. we might just find some inspiration for improving our own systems. That's a good point. Yeah, it really makes you question things. It does. It's so easy to get stuck in that, this is how it's always been done, thinking. Hmm. But the Amish show us that there yep. are other ways. Totally. So even though most of us aren't going to trade our smartphones for like a butter churn or anything, right. are there things we can learn from them and actually apply to our own lives? That's the big question, right? Like, what can we take away from all this? Exactly. And the research doesn't give us like a step-by-step -step guide, mm -hmm. but it does highlight some key ideas that could actually be pretty relevant. Yeah. One of the biggest takeaways for me is this idea of conscious consumption. Okay. They're not buying into every new gadget or trend. You know, they focus on what they really need, not just what they want. Right. They repair things, reuse things whenever possible. So it's about being more thoughtful about our spending habits and like the impact of the things we buy. Uh -huh. Thinking twice before we just click add to cart, you know? Yeah, exactly. Asking ourselves, do I really need this or is it just a passing whim? Totally. And it goes beyond just the financial side, too. It's about the environmental impact of all that consumption. That's true. The Amish, with their focus on local resources and their limited use of disposable goods. Right. Well, their ecological footprint is much smaller than ours. It's a good reminder that our choices, even the little ones, yeah, have consequences. Definitely. Another thing that really stands out in the research is their strong sense of community. Yeah, their healthcare system, yeah. the carpooling, the mm -hmm. tradition of barn raising. Mm -hmm. It's like community is woven into everything they do. Yeah, and it's not just about practicality either. It's about that feeling of belonging and shared responsibility. Okay, so 
We may not live in those kind of tight-knit communities like the Amish, but we can still build those connections and support networks in our own lives. Oh, absolutely. Maybe it's volunteering in our neighborhood or joining a Skillshare or even just being more present with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's about shifting away from that every man for himself mentality. Yeah. And embracing a more collaborative approach. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, who knows? We might even find that those connections end up having unexpected benefits, yeah. both financial and personal. Right. It's all connected. So it sounds like you don't have to be Amish to benefit from some of their core values. Not at all. The research really shows that living a more intentional, okay. community-focused life can lead to some pretty significant savings and maybe even a deeper sense of fulfillment. That's a great point. Yeah. But how do we actually start incorporating these ideas into our modern lives? I mean, where do we begin? Well, it's not about trying to perfectly imitate the Amish way of life. Right. It's more about taking inspiration from their values and figuring out how they fit into our own situations. Oh. You know, for some people that might mean starting a little vegetable garden to cut down on grocery costs yeah. and connect with nature a bit. For others, it might be learning some basic repair skills so they don't have to call an expensive handyman every time something breaks. So basically taking small steps toward self-sufficiency and mindful consumption. Exactly. And the changes don't have to be huge. Okay. You know, start small, experiment a little, find what works for you and your lifestyle. It's like a process of discovery. Yeah. And, and who knows, maybe we'll find that a little bit of Amish wisdom can help us create a more financially stable and fulfilling life. I think that's a great takeaway. You know, it's amazing how much we can learn from a culture that seems so different from our own. It is pretty remarkable. This whole deep dive has really opened my eyes to the potential for living more mindfully mm -hmm. and intentionally, even within like a modern context. It definitely challenges a lot of our assumptions. Yeah. I mean, we tend to think of progress as like, constant acquisition and technological advancement. But the Amish way of life kind of makes us rethink those ideas of success. Totally. Their emphasis on community, yeah. sustainability, simple living. Uh -huh. It's like a counterpoint to our consumer-driven society. Totally. It makes you wonder what really defines a rich and fulfilling life. That's a good question. Right. Like, is it about all the stuff we accumulate and keeping up with the trends, or is it something deeper, yeah. more connected to our values and our communities? The Amish seem to have found an answer that works for them. They have. And even though it may not be the right answer for everyone, it definitely gives us something to think about. It does. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from this whole deep dive. Okay. It's not about copying the Amish lifestyle exactly, but about taking the wisdom we find in their practices right. and applying it to our own lives. Like maybe it's trying a more DIY approach to things around the house yeah. or exploring alternative healthcare options or just being more aware of our consumption habits. Yeah. I think it all comes down to recognizing that we have more control than we think. Yeah. We're not just passive consumers swept along by, you know, modern society. Right. We have choices and those choices can really shape our lives and the world around us. It's pretty empowering when you think about it. It is. That even small, deliberate actions can make a difference. Yeah. Not just for our personal finances, but also for our collective impact. Absolutely. And it all starts with awareness. Okay. Taking the time to really examine our habits, our values, our priorities. That's how we start making choices that are more aligned with a truly intentional and sustainable way of life. Well said. Yeah. We hope this deep dive has sparked some ideas for you. Yeah. And we encourage you to keep exploring these concepts. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a conversation with your family about simplifying your lifestyle. Right. Or try growing some of your own food. Whatever it is, just remember that even those small steps can lead to big and rewarding changes. Couldn't agree more. So until next time, keep diving deep. And remember, the most valuable treasures are often found in unexpected places.